Hey folks, welcome back to Bear Fridge. Bear Fridge? Yeah. Alright, we're not bagging him. Are we gonna do that yet? It is tempting. But on the other hand, we did just unlock an entirely separate area. And I have another idea. It's uh, something I've heard a friend mention about this game. About what may or may not be possible. No flashlight, no flashlight. Okay. And I have not yet verified. So we're going to give it a shot. What might that be? Well, we can only set it in motion. We can't finish it yet, but we are going to get it in motion. Hey, I would like to order a die. Oh, do I have enough? Hurry up. Do you have? Of course. She nods. This is what she's here for. Tell me what you have in mind. Do you have any cursed dice? What do you mean by cursed? Abra... Ad... Abra... I mean, that's certainly a way to spell abracadabra that isn't what you expect out of, uh, out of your standard world. As cursed as this commercial area. All right. How about I surprise you? Come back in eight hours with seven real, and I'll give you your cursed die. Yeah, that is a deal. Great. See you in eight hours, then. Was there anything else? Can I order another? No, I'm sorry. I'm a bit overloaded just now, so I can only produce one die per customer. All right, hope I don't need that later to, for a check or anything. Uh, now I just have to count on my skills and my abilities. That's dangerous and foolhardy. Ooh, what was that? What was that? That's new. Hmm, looks like the remains of the 24-hour window shop. Oh, well, I think we already indirectly knew that, but maybe we just didn't have enough logic to confirm it. Yeah, we'll go with that. Do I have any other fantastical little thought bubbles? I can't do it again. Oh, well. But I wanna... There are a lot of books to read, but we are not going to read them today. Although, that could be one way to earn some XP. But we won't. We are finally gonna cross over and get a little further than our poor car. Our poor... Poor car. Oh, wait, no. While I am thought boosted. Hey, Kim. Look. This over with me. Uh, you take out the legal documents out of the envelope at 12, 40, 12 to 40 months. 12 to 40 month construction period in the zoning plan in the addendum. All right. It's going to be awfully close to the already existing buildings, almost wall to wall, practically integrating them into the youth center. The youth center cuts into the ocean like the bow of sun. I think I've already said that. This is either ominous or cool architectural choice. It's hard to say. What do you think, Kim? That's true. Oh, hey, that gave us even more. Center is very close to the houses, and it has an ominous shape. Well, there is no loophole. The simple truth is the current residents are going to lose their street access. And for the next 12 to 40 months, their lives will be dominated by constant construction noise right next door. Wait, what are the ramifications of this? Once the construction starts, it'll probably take a few months, a year maybe, for even the most stubborn occupants to get tired of living like this. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap and move out. Kim, look! 
These people are going to have to move away. What can we do about it? Mm, I should have seen it. The lieutenant frowns as he reads over the document again. Everard probably has eyes on us, but... Hmm. We could try to get other people to sign this instead of those listed. Or you could forge those signatures yourself. By the time he finds out, we'll already be gone. <laughs> yeah, minus 10 because his people could be watching. Don't do it anywhere near the dockyard. Actually, I'm going to walk into the dockyard and see if it gets even worse. Put the documents back. Hey, what's up here? There's something down there. The musty smell of a potato cellar in spring emanates from the air vent. Interesting. Oh, no, I did not. Hm. What? Oh, gosh darn it. Does it let me do that even if I'm at full? I, I already don't remember how much I had. Oh, well. Oh, you are very loud, aren't they? Gaston? It is such a pleasure to see you again, officer. Uh, it's still only 17. And that is with smokes. It's disappointing. Nope, not doing it. I even walked behind him. I don't know how deliberate that was, but... All right, I'm going to stand right in front of Measurehead and interact with us again. <laughs> I was thinking it was going to go from like negative 10 to negative 15 or something. Kind of disappointed. Put it back. Your race descent has temporarily halted, but you will fall again. Why are you not with the Hardy Boys? I am not the first line of defense. I am the last. He looks towards the coast defiantly. In addition, these so-called hardy boys are in an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. Their company is spiritually degrading. But you're all part of the union. The hardy manlets are on the pay of the company. I answer to the union and the union alone. And I do this out of race heroism. Finance is an alien concept to the Semenis. Now leave me. I must luxuriate in the company of my woman. Uh, the woman who watched me do a 360 no-scope skull kick on you? Shut up. Eh. You know what? I'm not sure I've ever actually done this. Mm, ask what kind of races there are first. Classification is core to this stuff. Oh boy, here we go down the rabbit hole. Hey, Measurehead, I am new to this world. Help me understand its races. I need to know what kind of different races there are. All right. What kind are there? What kind? Phrasing. Do you? The lieutenant looks at you. This is for the thing, Kim. What thing? We already got in the harbor. You just want to hear about races, don't you? Oh no. You are obviously a liberal, seolite, <clears throat> a polyculturalist. I can see it from your love of microtechnology and your sartorial choices. Do not deny your friend the truth you have denied yourself. There are three categories of race. Type A, the heroic races. Type B, the servile races. And the vile CF race cauldron of pederasty. Which one do you need education on? Uh, let's start from the top, Measurehead. Type A, those are the Semenes, the Aeropagite, and the Occidentals. Excluding the Mound, of course. 
the mound are riddled with eczema to the point where they find it impossible to smile. They are all lactose intolerant, a common result of inbreeding. A receding genetic pool has led the mound on reprehensible street parades in mound cities like Stads Canal and Vredefort, wearing wooden clogs on their feet and little green tassels on their hats. Uh, uh, uh. Are those Bavarian? German? Dutch? What's up with this? Wait, who exactly are the Mound? You know them by the names of their nation states. The Oranjes, the Gotwaldians, and the Koenigsteiners. My people simply call them Mound. Okay, so Germanic tribes in general and their descendants. I don't know. I don't not as up on some of this European history to know, uh, like back to where I mean are we talking like proto-goths at this point I'm not even sure mound is a derogative term for first world people of Gotwaldian descent they don't all have eczema also people of Katla like the Suru and the Uru are much more lactose intolerant what about the wooden clogs though uh, in some municipalities or Anye, people do wear shoes made of wood to street parades. Green, orange, and even yellow tassels have been seen on hats. The mound are proof that you can have too much occidental racial purity and tassel-centric culture. Inbreeding has led to a lactose intolerant subrace whom no one can take seriously. Colorful tassels are, mm, let's be honest, not a good sartorial choice for this century. You might want to avoid wooden clogs, too. Okay, okay, I got it. Who are Type A, then, in your view? The Vespertines and Messinians of Vesper and Messina. Oh, thank you for clarifying. Shut up. The ancient Meteorans of Meteo by the Golden Pisantic Sea, the Surens of Surleklef, and even the North Koenigsteiners all have Type A race propensities. The other large Mondial civilizations, the Mesca, are too yellow and oleaginous, sure, to count as a heroic race. True, they are violent and expansionist, but they have a glandular problem. He draws his finger across his face. Overproduction of sebum. Sebum is leaking into their brains, making them listen to El Mariachi music and eat toxic minced meat-based food, which in turn only produces more sebum. And who are the Seminese and the Aeropagites in this? As proven by the Maun and the Masca, Occidental Type A is in the retrograde. The Seminese and the Aeropagite are on the ascent. Uh, the Seminese, the indigenous people of this, the Insulindian Archipelago. The Seminese inhabit the southern islands. He gestures towards the south, across the ocean. I am Seminese, from the stock of Ulumbur on Ile de Fantin. Wait, didn't we already establish that you are just Revacholian? I am... <clears throat> we are not going into this again, baby man. All right, fine. Uh, what about the Aeropagites? The Aeropagites are the master race of the Ilmaran deserts. The Seminese are descendants of the Aeropagites. We came here during a heroic migration from Ilmara to Insulinde, thousands of years before the lactose intolerant, mound ridden Occidentals discovered this place. All right, uh, what is the difference between these two? The Aeropagites are sleek, long headed, the Seminese are powerful, mesomorphic. The former is an immutable progenitor, unchanged since the super isola of Pericarnassus. Ancient brains rest in their slender skulls. He falls silent, contemplating the beauty and the mystery. Then continues, the latter is perfected and adapting. Together they form the Semineo Arco uh, Areopagite or Semiopagite super race that is all. There are no more type A races in the world. Nature was not capable of more. Type B. Type B are the unheroic races, amorphous non-competitors of the great race, the Koikos and the Vacholier. They are mud-colored people. Woo! This is getting uncomfortable. Uh, but the Koikos of Grad, of Yugo, ah, uh, that's not, uh, suspect at all, uh, Jemsk and Shest et al. are what you would call white, officer, in a suspect 
description. You said Koikos. I've been trained to... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. These are some loaded statements. Yes. To an untrained eye, the Koiko appear white and pinkish, like a ham sandwich. But look into their eyes, and you will see. He squints, full of sage wisdom. <laughs> they are of an indistinct color, and so is their skin. Unhealthy, muddy, ashen. Pinkness is a racial quality that has to be earned through centuries of advanced ballistic warfare and the cultural domination that the Grad people have undergone for drinking Al Ghul and smoking the degenerate tabac herb and for eating potato. Potato? Potato. But what? Why potato? Because they boil them, mash them, and stick them in. How you say, stew. The Koiko, the countless micro-nationalities of Grad, are all inexplicably obsessed with potat. The only thing they like more is dividing into even more microscopic ethnostates, like political amoeba. And the Vachoye you mentioned? Revacholians, halfway between type A and the racial cauldron. Too mixed to know right from wrong. You tried your degenerate little revolution, which was the single greatest failure committed by humans in our 82,000 year history on this planet. Is it 82,000 years that we've been recording history? You have no, uh, very little idea of what is happening, but that seems a little off. I'm pretty sure history hasn't lasted that long. The mysteries of this the people of this planet are a tragedy that has played out countless times over, like a fever dream of skin, hair, and bone. Wake up, naive chess piece. No, I've heard about this revolution. Mistakes were made, but it was the right stuff. You're wrong about it. The revolution came to Revachot from Grad in Zareth ridden potato carts. It is literally an illness, a prion disease that leaves the parietal and frontal lobe ridden with holes. A soft sponge-like mass of dementia, hallucinations, and paranoia. The revolution is fatal familial insomnia, a hereditary prion condition passed from the Koiko to the Occidentals. Mm, but not sexually, probably through trade roots and potato acid, the prime component of the potato plant. Enough of type B mediocrity. He nods, satisfied with the outcome. All right, how about the vile cauldron, please? Type C through F are a museum of failed chimeric experiments and tragic maladaptations. They are tortured creatures waiting to be put to sleep. Your morbid interest in them worries me. Uh, chi chimeric experiments? Lesser races like the mosquito, a grotesque mixture of a Mexican woman and a Samanese man. Only pa- How does that, that, that can't be a thing. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is even worse than I thought. I, I can't, no. It's, yeah, see, it seems unlikely that two human beings Produce genetically sterile offspring. Hey, maybe I've misunderstood something, but aren't humans too similar to do that? Unlike horses and donk or horses and donkeys creating a mule because they are different species, we are the same species. What does You are right, you have misunderstood. You lack basic phylogenetic education. <laughs> Alright. Any more? Sure, let's go ahead. I'm, I'm not reading all, all your stuff out loud anymore. You make me a little bit shivery. Mmm. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> wow! Wow! Whoo! Alright, do I understand your awful, awful theory? Uh. 
All right, look, I'm going to look at the thought in the thought cabinet, and that is probably about it. All right. Let's discuss something else. I can go back into that? No. No, 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 no. You leave my disco alone. Can I spin kick him again? No. Oh, uh, pause please. Music stuff happening. Responsibility is hard, folks. Alright, uh, I guess we'll, we'll look at that thought. Advanced race theory. A mass of fantastic races swirls in your head. Desert pygmies playing with their own excrement. Goiko's juggling potatoes. Eczema written, written, fooled by the absurdity. Yeah. Eczema written mounds grinning and dancing on wooden clogs. Everyone is there. The whole race gang. Plus some that you may have come up with yourself. Woo, buddy. Yeah, you know what? If you want to read that, you can rewind and pause. I... I don't. <laughs> Ooh. You want to come help me punch the racist? Right to work. Right. No. Okay. Hey. Yes? Did you ever think that I would be the same racist? I was not ready for that. I know! Stop it! Jeez. All right. We are going to cross the lock again, but first we are going to take care of a couple things. And by a couple things, I mean... Hey, Roy! Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Hey, do you know anything about the traffic menace on the loose? Traffic? I'm sorry, officer, but I don't drive. Wait, why don't you drive? I just don't like it very much. Movement on the road never really gelled well with the movement of my thoughts. But didn't you hear it when the traffic menace drove over your roof? Now that I think about it, I do remember hearing a thunderous noise the other night. Some kind of powerful electric vortex hitting the shop and then moving on. That sure narrows down our list of suspects. Oh, did I talk, do this without Kim and that's why it's showing up as new? Uh, vortex, that sounds fascinating. Yeah, it was pretty wild. I didn't know, really know what to make of it, but I knew it meant something. Uh... Does that mean you don't have any idea who the driver was? Mm -mm. How about the Col du Mama de Ka? The Col du Mama de Ka? Sorry, I would never have guessed that you were that interested in ultrasonic sounds, or birds for that matter. Well, I wouldn't have guessed that you knew what the Col du Mama de Ka was. That's fair. It's just. It's been a long time since my cold umama de ka hunting days. Mm, I once knew a group of young musicians who decided they didn't want to play music anymore and started looking for all kinds of interesting sounds instead. This was before, you know, lost touch with them after all that. Yeah, that does sound kind of cool. Cool or not, one of them was obsessed with recording the Col du Mama de Ka, and he was one of those passionate people who know a lot about all kinds of strange things. So he got the rest of us to join in his search. Did you ever find it, Roy? We thought we did. We got together all these recordings of unusual sound patterns, compared them, <laughs> Cut them up and combine them into the Symphonia Col du Mama de Ka. Uh, 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 that is not very scientific. 
that wasn't really the point. After the symphonia, we moved on to the sounds of office supplies or something like that. And I doubt any of us would have been any good at pushing papers. Can I listen to it? No. It's my Aurora Borealis. Unfortunately, I don't have any recordings from my old life. None at all. But I do have a tape with some ultrasonic sounds that might be what you're looking for. He starts rummaging through some tapes behind the counter. Do we really have time for this? Yes. You know, spin that bird song. <sighs> All right, officer. He dusts off a case, then takes out the tape and places it on the tape player. This recording comes from down the coast. I wasn't looking to record anything specific. Just left a recording device there one morning. I keep trying to reach for Roy's voice, and I think I end up halfway to Walt and Simon's from Deus Ex instead. Keep in mind, I have to slow this one down enough to make sounds well over 200 kilohertz audible to the human ear. It will be strange. He switches on the tape player. The speakers begin to emit a low hum. As the hum grows louder, modulating, but always uncomfortably low, like it's coming not from the speakers, but also from inside your chest. Breathing is becoming difficult. Not good, not good. You're about to start suffocating. You have to stop this. There's a growing sense of dread. The sound is coming from inside you, but also surrounding you. It feels as though someone is standing just outside your range of vision and watching you, doing this to you. He nods to you reassuringly, just as more diverse, higher-pitched sounds, some random, some appearing, appearing to form patterns, hit your eardrums. Seagull, seabirds, most likely, gulls and such. Seagulls? And squads, but shh. He raises a pointer finger and inclines his head towards the speakers overhead. A new, high-pitched, shivering sound. That's it! That's the signal in the noise, the thin whisper. The low range of sounds is easier to handle with a focal point, but still troubling. You are mesmerized by the sounds, but also feel nausea welling up as the motif continues, then begins to recede, dissolving in what must be the sound of water lapping at the bank. He switches off the tape player. You know, now that I've listened to it on these new speakers, it's not the cold umama de Wrong patterns, wrong photons. Probably some insect trying to sing, higher than its predators can hear. Still, fascinating, aren't they? Early morning sounds. They are, Roy. Um, but there's something I'd like to sell. Sure, let me have a look. Let me see my pockets. All right, no. Postcards. Postcards are here primarily to sell. We've got Boogie Street. As much as I may like them, we are going to be a little more practical than sentimental during some parts of this game. And uh, especially since I'm sleeping on the mainland tonight, money is one of them. No. Ooh, 450. I could sell this photo? Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Ah, a dented stainless steel canister for transporting and storing heavy fuel oil. A logo on its side has been partially stripped over years of use. The government issued red dyed fuel oil inside looks like paint, though it smells much, much worse. I just bought that here. That's only worth 10? My gosh. Postcard. The postcard is prepaid. 
it is worth one real. All right. That's a lot of stuff. Close. Close? Yeah. All right. I'm good. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, autosave. L Lieutenant. Thank you, Lieutenant. Tell me a secret about yourself. No. It's like you're locked down. I still don't understand. What if I take off my authority lowering stuff? I only have one thing left that's lowering authority. Chances are I still can't see yes. that descriptor. Fourteen? I would need eight points of authority just to understand. Interesting. All right. Carry on. Okay. All right. Nope, 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 nope. We're going away faster than that music can play because I am tired of those notices appearing on my videos. Okay. It may be inevitable. I am going to continue through this area. Is this a playground? Kind of is. Ooh. There are things here. There are lots of things here. The wind is corralled by the four-story buildings around this yard. What's over here? Glory to the ghosts of us, says the graffito. I do not have the Jamrock Shuffle yet, do I? Do I really want to keep opening containers? Ah, what can I do? Magnesium. Nice. What are you? Someone has left their music collection beneath the tarpaulin. The smallest church in Sansan. I'll take that. We're one step closer, folks. To what? Ah, nothing. What about you? Coins, all right. You, more coins. More coins. I can't even get... Oh, what's up here? Birds in the birch tree. Barely audible coos come from above. Okay, so at this point I've done every kind of, of drug the game... The swing is missing. No one's been here for a long time. Rust peels off the bent iron posts of the swing. The wind whistles through the skeleton of the small house behind you. There's desolation everywhere. What happened here? In this yard, the lieutenant looks at the small building. A flock of gray swallows takes off in the distance. Mm, he's assessing the situation, how long ago it was abandoned. Someone thought they could have a summer house in a block obscure for cheap. It didn't work out. They abandoned it about a decade ago. What's a block obscure? A black block. A part of the city left unrenovated after the war. Or one that has fallen to gang violence or has become inhospitable in some other way. On aerial photos, block obscures look like dark squares. Hence their name. So this part of the coast is one? Practically. It's not an official term in any way, but he spreads his arms. Look around. No sewage, broken power lines, crime, drunks. Life is tough in the blocks. It's no place to build a summer house. Hey, at least they left some music behind. Yes, and you picked it up as part of the Jamrock Shuffle. He gives you a wary smile. It's not meant as nagging, just an observation. Finally, we're starting to get some of that. We should move. I don't think we will solve the murder with forays into the urban hinterland. At least in this phase of the investigation. 
I wonder if that would change in other phases of the investigation. Hmm. Oh, goodness. Hey! We've been here! Uh... What was that? This is it. The scene of the party. The fire pit, cigarettes, and empty bottles of all evidence. Hold up, don't you mean the scene of the crime? Not as such. I'm talking about what came after. The party scene. Huh? Sure does look like a lot of folks partied here. Looks like they were here a while, judging from all the bottles. The sunken motor carriage provided them a focal point, like a goose ice sculpture or a chocolate fountain. Hey, Kim, looks like we had a couple party goers here. Looks like it. Or maybe just me. Looks like they had a great time laughing here. This was some kind of theater to them. A circus production by a great clown. Hey, let's keep moving, detective. Kim is trying to get us to not focus on these things before we implode. Ooh, what do we have here? Seems the person walking away was either confused or drunk out of his mind. <sighs> Why not both? The underside of this boat has been recently tarred. All right, we've seen that boat. What are you? Plastic tar. Tear. All right, what are you? Through the broken glass, dusty shelves, and a forgotten chair. Postcard. Of course, after I sell. Coal City. Oh, wait. Faux Knot plus two drama. That could be useful. We see a dark red chair in the dim light of the room. It's only a red chair. Just a red chair in an empty shack. With what looked like a dusty bow tie on the shelf. Nothing to see here, right? Kim, where are we? In someone's abandoned shack. On the coast. In Martinet. In Ravichol. He's afraid that you've forgotten suddenly. What's with the red chair? Nothing. He's just a piece of furniture. He looks at the chair gathering dust. Red paint is peeling off of it. Looks like blood, doesn't it? What's with the red bow tie? It's just a piece of clothing you've picked up. You do that, officer. You collect clothes sometimes. He sounds a little worried. It's an odd habit. Don't be worried, Lieutenant. Clothes are therapeutic. All right, let's move. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, Kim. Other than... We got issues. All right. Uh, this house. Oh, I can't. I guess that is an elevation shift. It's just hard to tell in the watercolor. Allez-vous, sen. All right. Hello. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that is an elevated dock, isn't it? All right, well. We'll figure this out. Uh, we'll do that in a minute. We're gonna come over here first and, uh, poke a bucket. Hey, a bottle! What are these doing in the fish? Franco-Nigerian cavalry boots. Plus one perception. Alright, so we just gained another... We got a book, got a tape. We'll look at those in a little bit. Items. Postcard. Coal City. Oh, wait. 
The postcard depicts a forest of smokestacks releasing fat plumes of smoke into blue cloudless sky. The tinge of age, the color of old teeth, gets a, gives it a sickly look. Written on the back is a single sentence, repeated twice. I got out. I got out. No addressee. Oh, not plus two drama, theater kid. You're sure that wearing this tie is a statement. You're not sure what kind of statement, though. Hey, I generally wear bow ties instead of regular. This heck with you. Rude. Good old calf length cavalry boots. Mount that horse and ride into the night. The heel comes in handy, too. It definitely makes you some good five centimeters taller, but could it be that it's also making you sharper? more perceptive to your surroundings now that you've gained a new perspective. And in fact, your plus one perception says, of you from above. We don't get any new things from wearing it. Box. Box. Oh, hang on. The planks creak beneath your weight. The ladder leads to a school of fish. Swimming in the kelp. Okay. This boat is floating freely in the water, unmoored. Aye, officer. A woman in a raincoat stands on the quay, considering an overturned boat. A sword in a scabbard hangs from her hip. As always, I am the Lawbringer. Graduated to Lawbringer now. Men with authority have their quirks. Comes with never being second guessed about anything. She waves you off. Brings you here, <laughs> that depends. Where are we exactly? Fishing village on the seashore. This place doesn't really have a name. It's sometimes called Elizabeth. Why? The sign on the street leading here is illegible. Has been since they built this place. Hmm. The wind rattles her earrings. Actually, aren't those fishing lures? All right, I've got questions. The first one is, what's your name? My name is Lillian. People call me net picker. I think I have time for questions, and that was actually the second one. Well, that's rude. Indeed, you're always confused as to your whereabouts. Ask her about the cool sword. It helps to break the ice. Hey, nice sword. Does it have a story? Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of a story. <laughs> it's to intimidate folks, mostly. She smiles at her own joke, though. Hold on, do you know how to use it? Not really. I know some basic moves, and I know it as sure as hell beats a knife when you're in a tough spot. But not when you're in a tight spot. Is that what guns are for? Guns are expensive and fragile, I think. Mm, besides, I got kids. Can't have guns around them, and sometimes a sharp blade is enough to keep folks at bay. Why do you need intimidation tactics? From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eye of many men, and believe me, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. Uh, I don't like any of the other two options, so... Where are all the men now? Some went to patch their wounds, their lessons learned. Others were more thick-headed. And one of them I ended up marrying. Wait, why? If they're thick-headed, guess I enjoyed the way he bled. Their expression doesn't really change. It's hard to say if it's a joke. But if it is, then why the melancholy? Where's your husband now? Gone. He disappeared. Sounds like it, it absolutely does not sound like a missing person's case. We are not going to look for him. I have done enough of these side quests. Kim, are you okay? I... Forgive me, detective. I am troubled after all the running. That That's fair. No, no, there's nothing to find. He's dead. Wrapped in plastic. Lost to the waves. Oh. Say no more. 
wait for her to continue. He didn't respect the sea, went out there drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse showed up two weeks later. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are from a loss, know that it was four years ago and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. She really liked those muscles, though. It's in the way she pronounces sinewy. Yeah, it's healthy to let go and move on. Gotta keep the wheel spinning. Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bed sick with melancholy. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time, and went on. She glances at the village where two little kids are playing with what looks like rocks. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. This is neither a touchy nor a very interesting topic for her. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another better drunk. Ask her, mm, both of you could need some action. I'm looking for someone. Maybe you can help. Let's see. Who are you looking for? I'm looking for misting cryptozoologists. Ugh. I don't think I know what these are. Care to elaborate? People who look for animals who are hard to find. We're going to take the middle of the road thought here. Aha! Like snowmen. Snowmen. Two odd guys have been wandering around here. Nose in the sand. Talking about snowmen and the like. The like? Right. Not only snowmen, but green men, monkey men, burning rhinos. You get the picture. All right, where'd they go? I don't really know. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were heading. Who else are you looking for besides snowmen? That's all we're looking for right now. Uh, t t actually, I'm, I'm looking at the time now, and maybe we will get to the rest of uh, Lillian's dialogue later. Till then, folks.